Hey there YouTube, Alaska Pirates here with our second product review. Uh, this is going to be a general review of my iPhone setup and part two of the Ulanzi U-Rig metal review. I shopped around and did my due diligence and decided that Ulanzi is producing quality well-made products at a very reasonable price. The affordability of their products makes it possible to put together a system for creating web content and general mobile filmmaking without breaking the bank. On top of the affordability, the quality of the products is amazing. Everything seems very well put together, sturdy, nothing about any of my Ulanzi stuff feels cheap or poorly made, which is important to me because I am very rough on gear. So we'll see how it lasts. Okay, now for the list of Yolanzi products we're going to cover in this review. The mounts. I have one Yolanzi PT-2 aluminum alloy universal cold shoe extension bracket. I have one Yolanzi ST-02S aluminum metal cell phone tripod mount with one cold shoe mount. I have one set of Yolanzi Osmo Mobile 3 counterweights which we will talk about in more detail when I review the Osmo Mobile, but I thought I would mention them here because I'm just listing all of my Ilanzi gear. Okay, I purchased these items in order to use them to shoot different angles and for general purpose filmmaking. They're also very portable, and the PT-2 cold shoe extension is also compatible with my Pentax K70 DSLR camera. So these two items really expand what I am able to do with my gear. They were cheap, they are bomb proof, and they are simple to use. I love simplicity. Next up, the lenses. I purchased the anamorphic lens with the Ulanzi 52mm filter adapter ring. I also got one Amazon Basics circular polarizer and one Amazon Basics UV filter to start out with. I'm probably gonna, you know, buy some ND filters, but that's later on. Uh, I got one 65 millimeter telephoto lens, one 75 millimeter super macro lens, one 16 millimeter wide angle lens that came with a CPL filter, uh, one 7.5 millimeter super wide angle lens, one Yolanzi phone case with 17 millimeter lens threads and one U-Rig metal. Uh, I purchased these lenses 100% because of the price, uh, the information I found, and the reviews suggested that they are good quality pieces for the price and worth it if you're just starting out. I am however very open to all mobile products and I'm interested in putting together a system that I am happy with and that works for me composed of whatever products I like the best. I am thankful that Ulanzi is producing solid products for affordable prices. I can honestly say that Ulanzi will from now on be my go-to for any kind of hardware I might need. In fact at this point I actually regret a couple of my purchases. Uh, I ended up going for brand name when Ulanzi actually makes cheaper pretty much identical products for much less money. So in the future, whenever I need any kind of hardware, uh, Ulanzi is going to be my first stop. Uh, I do hope I end up really liking the lenses, but again, I'm totally open to other, other products, other companies, but the only issue with that is the price significantly rises with other brands. But such is life. Uh, other products that are featured in this review are the LumCube Air, the Movo VXR10, which is the microphone that I will be using from now on to capture all audio for these reviews and my videos in general, uh, and the Slow Dolphin quarter inch hot shoe mounts. All great products, and I may or may not review a couple of them in the future. Okay, my review will consist of reporting on the performance of the gear in three shooting scenarios. For this review, I will be placing the lenses over the main camera on iPhone XS. I do plan on making a more in-depth review that will outline my experiences with both the iPhone XS's cameras in more specific detail, but that will come after three months of use. Be on the lookout. 
Okay, the shooting scenarios are, first of all, general first impressions and performance at my desk. Second, shooting at night in the cold Alaska winter. Third, shooting during the day in the cold Alaska winter. It is my intention to put the gear to work in conditions that I will expect it to perform in on a regular basis. I have no connection to Yolanzi. They are not paying me, so I plan on providing a straight up honest performance review of the gear. I will be doing this in the span of a day, so please keep that in mind. Again, I do plan on updating after long term use. I will use these lenses for the next three months for sure and will work on putting together a treasure or trash final product review. Okay, first impressions. All lenses will be placed on the wide iPhone XS lens using the native camera app, except for the anamorphic lens. For the anamorphic lens, I will use both the Moment and Filmic Pro apps to gather sample footage. Okay, first lens up is the 65 millimeter telephoto lens. The image looks good, the colors are sharp, the picture is sharp, and everything looks nice and clear. The 2x zoom button works well and looks decent. It also zooms all the way into 6x with no issues, and the autofocus appears to work quickly and smoothly. The 75mm macro lens looks very clear and there is a lot of detail in the image. The colors look good and it seems like as long as you are in the zone it will focus. When I push the 2x button, the video will black out for a moment and then come back. The same thing happens while manual zooming as well. Anything over the 2x will cause it to black out unpredictably. The 16mm wide angle lens has some distortion and blur around the edges, most noticeable in the upper left hand corner so far. The zoom works fine, 2x and beyond function while the camera is on the tripod while shooting handheld, the same blackout zoom issue is present. Anything over 2x will cause random cutouts, but anything under 2x works just fine. Next we have the 7.5mm super wide lens. Again it has blur around the edges. The left hand side looks the worst as of now. Uh, when I pressed the 2x button it blacked out the first time and behaved the exact same way as the other lenses. Anything over 2x would cause it to black out unpredictably. Unpre However, it was working perfectly with no blackouts at all for a while as well. So it's kind of hit or miss, and I feel like that might be the case with the other lenses as well. Uh, and I wouldn't trust any of them past the 2x zoom, so that's okay with me too. I'm not really interested in digital zoom so much. The anamorphic lens. Both the Moment and Filmic Pro apps will automatically process your footage if you set them to in the apps, which is cool. It saves another step in post, and it's just one less thing to worry about. The Moment app uses a pinch zoom and it works just fine with the anamorphic lens. The Zoom in Filmic Pro works perfectly as well. I will have to do some more shooting with both apps to see which one I prefer, but on my first impression, uh, I think either will work just fine. Uh, so far, the anamorphic lens is probably my favorite after the first impression shakedown. I really like the lens flare. Overall first impression. Uh, I think all the lenses feel well made and solid. I have a few concerns about the blurring on the wide angle lenses, but we shall see how they perform in the field. I'm not too concerned with the zoom issues. I personally am fine with a max digital zoom of 1.9x. In my opinion, zoom on mobile is pretty much just an effect tool to put emphasis on something without too much concern on the image quality. That's just my opinion, but no matter how you look at it, mobile has obvious limitations on zoom capabilities anyways, so it's not too big of a concern for me. On to the next scenario.